Today we're going to talk about the Dover Demon and a resurgence of sightings of the Dover Demon in Alaska. Check it out. So what is the Dover Demon? The Dover Demon is a little humanoid alien looking thing with long arms and long legs that was seen in Dover, Massachusetts. And with that, here's the original story for the Dover Demon. Over the course of two days in April 1977, four teenagers in the idyllic town of Dover, Massachusetts witnessed a horrifying alien creature but before they could find an explanation, the Dover Demon disappeared. Just 20 miles southeast of Boston, Massachusetts, lies a picturesque hamlet named Dover. But hidden among the hardwood forests and curvy back roads lurks the Dover Demon, with a watermelon-shaped head and the body of an emancipated monkey. Within but a few hours, four teenagers in Dover claimed to have witnessed the horrifying creature. And all of their accounts describe the same thing, large, glowing eyes and an otherwise blank face. Over the span of two nights in 1977, several teenagers reported to have seen a similar creature, and there still have been no explanation for these sightings. William Bartlett, then 17 years old, was the first person to see the Dover Demon, and he and his two friends, Mike and Andy, drove along the local farm street just past 10 p.m. Bartlett witnessed a creature standing on a wall, its eyes glowing in the headlights. It was not a dog or a cat, it had no tail, and an egg-shaped head. The Dover Demon, as the creature soon became known, appeared more human than animal. Bartlett said that it reminded him of children with dissented stomachs, but the head had no mouth, no ears, or nose. Two hours after Bartlett witnessed the creature, 15-year-old John Baxter walked his girlfriend home near a heavily wooded area. He said he got within 15 feet of a creature that looked remarkably like the one Bartlett saw. Baxter made a black and white drawing of the Dover Demon. He stated this creature had large eyes and tendril-like hands. He saw this thing standing next to a tree. The next night on April 22nd at around midnight, a 15-year-old girl named Abby Brabham saw the Dover Demon. It was standing upright next to a tree she said, much like the sighting the night before. The locations of the sightings, when plotted, lay a straight line over two miles. All the sightings were made near water. Bartlett remained shaken and haunted by the sighting even years later. In a lot of ways, it kind of embarrassed me. I definitely saw something. It was definitely weird. I didn't make it up. Sometimes I wish I had. Independently, all three witnesses of the Dover Demon had the same or eerily similar story. In all accounts, there was something that was kind of human but not quite animal about the creature. It seemed undeniable that something uncanny had come to Dover. Some chalk up the strange encounters to inebriation. Well, Bartlett says he and his friends were looking for beer that night. They never did imbibe. Alternatively, the creature could have been a fowl or baby moose mistaken for something more sinister. Although April wasn't foul season and moose were long gone from Dover at the time of the sighting. Additionally, fowls and moose don't stand on hind legs, nor do they sit on top of walls. Bartlett also denies that the creature could be from an animal of any kind. This definitely wasn't a fox or an animal. It was some kind of creature with long, thin fingers. The thing was more human-like than it was an animal. I've always tried to guess what it was, never had any idea. I wasn't trying to be funny. People who know me know I didn't make this up. Lauren Colmel, a noted cryptozoologist from Maine, thinks all three sightings were credible. He spoke to the teens within a week of the reported sightings. We have a credible case, over 25 hours, by individuals who saw something. Coleman believes that the Dover Demon doesn't match the inexplicable sightings reported before, such as those of Chupacabra, Sasquatch, the Roswell aliens, or bat-eared goblins from Hobsonville, Kentucky in 1955. Stranger still, weird sightings like this isn't out of the ordinary in Dover. This area of Massachusetts has had its fair share of weirdness throughout the centuries. Coleman noted that the area in which the Dover Demon was sighted already had a history of unexplained activity. 
In the same area you had three major legends going on, including a sighting of a devil on a horseback in the 1600s, stories of buried treasure, and then the Dover Demon. I think it certainly says something, Coleman continued. It's almost as if there are certain areas that collect sightings in a magnetic way. Dover could be such a place. Then, in 1972, just five years before the Dover Demon sightings, Mark Sennett swore he saw a creature in the woods. Something with glowing eyes had turned up in his car's headlights, too. We saw a small figure deep in the woods, moving at the edge of the pond. We could see it moving in the headlights. We didn't know. But whatever the reality behind this barrage of odd occurrences, the Dover Demon had since sparked a cultural phenomenon. There are video games featuring of the alien-like creature from as far away as Japan. The Dover Demon is a small humanoid reported from Dover, Massachusetts. It was the subject of intensive scare during the 1970s, when multiple witnesses came forward with their sightings. The Dover Demon is described as looking sort of like a gray variety of alien, except that it has skin of a rosy orange instead of a sickly gray. The Dover Demon has a large head and a small, stick-like body. It can be bipedal, but often travels on all fours or switches back and forth between the two modes of locomotion. It has eyes that glow, sometimes orange, sometimes green. It does not seem to wear any clothing unless the clothes fit tightly and is the same color of its body. Unlike the greys, the Dover Demon does not seem to be associated with UFOs. It just wanders around on its own. Cryptozoologists seldom show interest in the Dover Demon. Mainstream cryptozoologists are rarely willing to seriously investigate humanoids other than hairy humanoids. It seems that the sightings only happen during a short period of time, with most claiming that the sightings have now ceased, so the Dover Demon does not seem to be a pressing matter. Sightings the bizarre tale begins at 10.32 p.m. on April 21st as three 17-year-olds, Bill Bartlett, Mike Mazoka, and Andy Brody, are driving north from Farm Street. Bartlett, who's behind the wheel of the Volkswagen, spots something creeping along the wall of loose stones on the left side of the road. At first, he thinks this, the image is a dog or a cat until his headlights shine on it, and he realizes it's nothing like he's ever seen before. The figure slowly turns his head and stares into the lights with two round, large, glassy, lidless eyes shining brightly like two orange marbles. His watermelon-shaped head, resting on top of a thin neck, is the size of the rest of its body, except for its oversized head. The creature is thin with long, spindly arms and legs and large hands and feet. The skin is hairless and peach-colored and appears to have a rough texture like wet sandpaper, Bartlett subsequently tells cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman, standing no more than three and a half feet to four feet tall. The figure is shaped like a baby's body with long arms and legs. It had been making its way along the wall, its long fingers curling around the rocks when the car's light surprised it. Unfortunately, neither of Bartlett's companions sees the creature. The sighting lasts only a few seconds, and before Bartlett can speak, the car leaves the scene. Then the creature is gone. Bartlett drops his friends off and goes to his wall rope street home. Visibly upset, he walks to the door and his father asks him what's wrong. Bartlett relates the story and later sketches what he's seen. Around midnight, 15-year-old John Baxter leaves his girlfriend's Kathy Cronin's house at the south end of Miller High Road. Then Baxter starts walking up the street on his way home. Half an hour later, after he has walked about a mile, he observes someone approaching him. Because the figure is short, Baxter assumes it's an acquaintance of his. Baxter assumes it's an acquaintance of his, M.G. Bouchard, who lives on the same street. John calls out and no response. Baxter and the figure continue to approach each other until finally the latter stops. Baxter then halts as well and asks, Who is that? The sky is dark and overcast and he can only see a shadowy form. Trying to get a better look, Baxter takes one step forward and the figure scurries off to the left, running down the shallow wooded gully and up the opposite bank. As the figure runs, Baxter hears its footsteps on the dry leaves. He follows the figure down the slope, then stops and looks across the gully. 
There he sees the creature, standing in a silhouette about 30 feet away, its feet molded around the top of the rock several feet from the tree. The creature's body reminds Baxter of a monkey's, except for its dark figure-shaped head. Its eyes, two lighter spots in the middle of his head, are looking straight at Baxter, who, after a few minutes, begins to feel uneasy, realizing he has never seen such a creature before and fearing that what it might do next. He backs up carefully up the slope, his heart pounding. He then walks very fast down the road to the intersection at Farm Street. There, a couple of passing cars pick him up and drive him home. But this isn't the only account of the Dover Demon. Recently, I discovered that in Teller, Alaska, near where I live, multiple people have reported seeing a similar looking entity, but thousands and thousands of miles away from Dover, Massachusetts. So my encounter with the Dover Demon was in August of 2014. I was around 12 years old and I was visiting a friend and it was starting to get late out. So I had to go home and I had to walk around this one building and there was an orange light from Head Start building shining and it was like starting to drizzle outside but I could still see and it was super dark out and I was walking past the Head Start on my left and there was an abandoned building on my right and it had a corner and as I was walking out of the corner of my eye I saw something white, pale white and it was crouched over. It had long arms, long legs, and it was just like super skinny and pointy. And its eyes were huge and black. It was so weird. But I saw it in the corner of my eye and as I was turning to look, it looked at me and I watched it crawl around the corner super fast and silently. Another interesting similarity between the Dover Demon and what I saw is the way it walked. It had long arms and it could walk on all fours and it can also walk on its hind legs. So here is a detailed description of the Dover Demon that I saw. It had a large round head, large black eyes, they were round also, and I can't believe how skinny all of the limbs of its arms and its legs were and how fast it seemed to crawl and it was so silent too. It was when it was crouched over when I saw it it was maybe this tall I'm gonna guess. It was really long too so I can't imagine how much taller it would be if it stood up. I would have to guess that the Dover Demon is a when it was crouched over it was around maybe four and a half feet because I'm five foot six so that's just a guess. All the sightings that we saw in Teller was around fall time when it was dark and rainy. When I was near the Dover Demon it felt like it made the hairs on the back of my head stand up like this isn't something you normally see. It was a very odd paranormal feeling and I didn't know what it was so I ran in fear. When I was near the Dover Demon it felt like it was emanating an eerie energy. And since I've never seen anything like this before, I ran home afraid thinking it was stalking me in the dark and as soon as I got home I told my dad what happened and he told me well don't stay out in the dark anymore <laughs> and maybe about two weeks later I told my friend what happened and she said that is so weird the other night she saw something white with big eyes my friend and her sister were both in the car and it was dark out and the only thing they could see was with their headlights. So they're coming to a T in the road 
and she was driving while her sister was in the passenger seat and she turned right and as the headlights were shining over the bushes she saw something white standing there watching them and she asked her sister did you just see that and her sister didn't because she was on her phone so i was telling my friend about what i saw and she said she saw the same thing the same thing in the bushes had white skin and big dark eyes just staring at them as they turned it was so weird like what are the odds of two people in a small town seeing the same creature like i now i know i wasn't crazy <laughs> so all of this happened just to give you an idea of what kind of town we lived in it's a population of about 280 people and both of us saw this creature within two weeks of both of them happening. My friend said that my cousin also saw something pale white with big eyes in the dark running away from him. So I never got to talk to him about it, about what he saw, but it sounds exactly like what me and my friend saw and it acted in the same way. It's always fleeing. So I never heard of the Dover Demon. I thought what we saw was just some random creature that nobody else has ever seen. But when I was hanging out with Kitty Vitok and I told him about what I saw, he searched on the internet for the Dover Demon and he didn't tell me, but he showed me a picture and he's asked, is this what you saw? Not a picture, a drawing, I mean. He showed me a drawing from the internet and he asked if that's what I saw. And it was a dead ringer for what I saw. A, like a round head, big eyes, pale white. It was weird. Also had really long arms, really long legs, and it also had the hunch, like the roundness of the body that I saw. It was so mind-blowing to find out that other people across the country saw the same thing and it kind of makes me wonder is the dover demon just one dover demon or is there more than that and why did we see it all the way up in alaska and why do people see it in the lower 48 i'm starting to wonder if it hangs around up here in the winter time and if it's pale white I wonder if it'll blend in with the snow. So another interesting part about the Dover Demon story. In Massachusetts, the kids didn't really get close enough to it, so they couldn't tell if there was an eerie feeling from it. But as Kate said, when she was near it, she felt an eerie feeling. And one of the strange things that I've d discovered with research about the eerie paranormal feeling is uh, this guy messaged me who drove trucks. He drove trucks to Area 51 sometimes. So he had to drop off stuff. He didn't see anything there because, you know, it's tightly restricted. But he drove his truck into the base and dropped off supplies and then drove away. He was allowed, granted clearance. And while he was parked there, he said that he had a very eerie feeling. Like a very creepy feeling. And I came to realize that maybe this creepy feeling that people feel Maybe it has something to do with uh, like shamanic or magical energy or interdimensional energy or something. And the government is probably using that type of energy mixed with technology in order to create super technology beyond what's capable with, beyond what's possible with just normal messing with the laws of physics messing with the fabric of reality with shamanism mixed with regular technology. Uh, often you hear of creepy or an eerie feeling with uh, supernatural beings and I believe that might have to do with the field that they generate or the way that they travel to this world from other places or the mere fact that they have powerful shamanic energy or magical energy or whatever you want to call it. That feeling of eeriness, I think, in itself is a form of evidence and it's something to think about. 
So what is a Dover Demon? Obviously, it doesn't necessarily have to only be in Dover, Massachusetts. Whatever this thing is, is appearing randomly at random parts of the world, and nobody really knows what it is. Is it nefarious? Is it evil? I don't think so. Personally, I think it looks kind of harmless. Although, it would be pretty creepy to see something like that if you're alone in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't really seem like it does anything. It kind of just looks at people and walks around with thin little legs and arms. It doesn't very, seem very dangerous and it doesn't look dangerous. It doesn't have sharp teeth. It doesn't have muscles. Uh, it doesn't seem to bother anyone. It just kind of looks at people. So, so why did they even call it a demon? I have no idea. But this just goes to show that there is many strange things in the world. And the fact that more people than in Dover, Massachusetts, more than that, just them have seen this, kind of validates the story a little more. And when I told these people what the Dover Demon was when they described it to me, they were shocked to hear that other people have seen something similar. They didn't even hear about the Dover Demon when they were describing what they saw to me. The weird, kind of... Uh, the weird shaped head with the big eyes and the long arms and legs. I was like, that kind of sounds like the Dover Demon. And then I showed them a picture of it and they kind of freaked out. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. It looks like uh, maybe the Dover Demon is another one of those interdimensional travelers. Or maybe it's a victim of some kind of anomaly in its own universe and it got stuck here. Maybe this being is one of many in a different reality. Or maybe it's something that comes from underground. It's hard to say. We don't have enough information on these creatures to definitively say what it is or where it came from. Other than it's extremely unusual. Like what's it doing in Alaska? Alaska's cold. Although it was seen in the summer. The climate difference from Boston to here is drastic. Is it an alien? Is it an interdimensional traveler? Who knows? If anyone else has seen anything like this, please send me your story because the more information we get on a subject, the more we can unlock the mysteries of what it is. So be sure to send your stories to xenohuntersinfo at gmail.com and like and subscribe. And remember, if you want to help the story out, share my videos in different Facebook groups or with your friends or whatever. Don't ask, just share. Till next time, guys. This is Kitavito.